Tonight, I'm going to be assembling the recharge kit, which is this PCB, these three resistors, a button, a capacitor, some colored LEDs, a battery holder, and inside the battery holder is a microcontroller. I put it inside the battery holder so that it would be protected in shipping. So to start with, I take all the other components and I set them aside and I take the resistors and I pull off this little piece of paper on the end. And then I bend the resistors like this. And I thread them through the PCB. And all components should cover the white silk screen. So the PCB is black in this case, and the silk screen is the white markings on the PCB. And all the components should cover those white markings. So they go on this side. So then I flip it over and I take my soldering iron and I apply a small amount of solder to one side of the resistor. And then I hold it on the side I'm not soldering and I remelt it and push it against the board. And that makes it lie perfectly flat. Once I'm happy with how flat it is on the board, I solder the other side. And I like to leave these at a right angle to the leads at a right angle because that makes it much easier to remove the component later if I need to. Some people like to bend the leads like this while they're soldering. I find it really not useful because it becomes very difficult to remove the leads later, to remove the components later, if you do that. So my recommendation is always to start with the flattest parts, or the parts that stick out the least, and work your way to taller parts while leaving the leads at right angles to the board. So I just go ahead and I solder all the resistors in the same way. Okay, and then next, I'm going to do the capacitor. So, because these pins are further apart than these, I need to sort of bend it out a little bit, and then bend it back. And I try and keep these parallel just because removal later, if you want to change values, is much easier if they're at right angles to the board. So that means parallel, the leads parallel to each other. So then I hold my finger like this and you can remelt the solder to put it exactly where you want it. and then solder the other side. And then I'm gonna do the AT Tiny. And on this chip, there's a small dot on this side and there's a star here. So I need to make the star and the dot match each other. There's also this mark on some of these chips so you have that mark match the mark if your chip has that. And that indicates which pin is pin one. It's also the square um, through hole part. So these are all squares and then there's seven circles where the pins can go. So to fit it in there, these are at a slight angle. I have to bend them so that they're at a right angle. 
So I set it in there. And then I just solder one pin and then holding the microcontroller with this finger, I remelt that solder and push up and then it's perfectly flat on the board. And the microcontroller is the only component that you can actually damage if you put it in backward. The resistors can't be put in backward, they don't have a polarity, and the capacitor can't be put in backward. But the microcontroller, if you put it in backwards, could break. And then the button just gets put in here and soldered. So I solder the one pin. Check the alignment, push it, solder again, and then solder all the other pins. And then the last component is the LEDs. And if you look at the silk screen, there's a square pin and a circular pin. The square pin is always pin one, and the circular pin is pin two. And if you look at the plastic on the LED, it's sort of a hat shape, and there's this rim, and there's a part of it that's cut off. So in this case, it's this side, which is the short lead. And so I know it goes in this direction because the flat part of the plastic matches the flat part of the silk screen. So then I thread it through and I solder one pin and then I put my finger on it like this, remelt that pin while pushing and then it's perfectly flat on the board. Then I can solder the other lead. And trim them off. Okay, so now I have all the LEDs soldered on there. And let's say, for example, if we look at it this way, we can see that this LED is a little bit out of alignment. So if we wanted to fix that, what you can do is take the soldering iron and melt both leads at the same time while keeping your finger on that LED and pushing it to the right location and then removing the soldering iron and checking to see if they're in alignment. And so now I notice that the yellow one is also a little bit out of alignment. So I can fix it by melting both of them at the same time. And just pushing it. And then seeing if I like it better. Okay, 
And then the last step is to test the PCB to make sure, well, to solder the battery holder and to test the PCB before we glue it all together. So what I'm going to do, because I want this one to have a short cable like this, rather than a long cable like this one, I'm going to cut it shorter. So now I've stripped the wires a little bit. And then I'm going to get some batteries. Make sure this is in the off position while I do this so that they don't short. So match up the positive, so the red wire, with the positive on the PCB. And then flip it over. And solder it into place. Similarly, match up the black wire with the negative. And solder it into place. And then if you want to, you can push them in a little bit further because this wire casing has the tendency to melt a little bit and shrink. So I like to just push them up a little bit. And then I trim the positive because it's too long. You could trim both of them if they're too long. And then I turn it on and I push the button just to confirm I've soldered everything correctly. and it should be working. At this point, if you notice that an LED is backward, you need to unsolder it and flip it around or just use a new LED. But the program is working. So the last step is to glue it together. Once everything has been soldered and checked, the last step is to take a glue gun and to glue it to the back of the case. So I tend to put the glue all over the parts I soldered because they're going to stick out the most. So therefore they'll have the best contact with this outside of the um, battery case. So I put the glue on there. And then I just align it before the glue hardens. And there's our kit, fully assembled. So I hope you enjoyed watching me put that together. And if you bought one, I hope it helps you figure out how to assemble it um, Thanks for watching.